frogs have lived on Earth before there were dinosaurs, and they continue to inhabit the planet long after the dinosaurs last walked on it. However, the dwindling numbers of these resilient amphibians have become a cause of grave concern to ecologists and activists alike. Since the 1970s, more than 200 species of frogs have become extinct, and almost 600 species are listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List. Like sparrows, today it is almost impossible to spot frogs at Delhi. But this is not yet the case in the NCR region of Gurgaon, where some species of frogs continue to breed. Dr. Robin Suyesh specializes in studying the ecology and behavior of frogs in South and Southeast Asia. For the past few years, he has been exploring the diversity of frogs in Delhi NCR. So as of now, there are eight recorded species of amphibians in Delhi NCR. There are six species of frogs and there are a couple of toads. These six species of frogs belong to two different families, uh, one Dicroglossid, another one Microhylid. So Dicroglossids include skipper frog, a bullfrog, the cricket frog and also the, the burrowing frog. The other two frogs belong to microhylids and uh, they include the, uh, the balloon frog and also the uh, narrow mouth frog. There are a couple of toads which, are, which includes the, the Indus Valley toad and uh, the common Indian toad. Amphibians play a very vital role in an ecosystem. If you look at tadpoles, they, uh, they keep the water bodies clean by feeding on alga. If you look at the adults, they consume a large quantity of insects, which also include uh, many of our disease vectors, which can be a source of a lot of problem for humans as well. They are also a source of food for a large number of predators like snakes, many other reptiles as well as birds, including mammals. Amphibians are also considered to be bioindicators. Their presence in an ecosystem also indicate a very healthy ecosystem. They have semi-permeable skin that makes them very susceptible to uh, contaminants. And if they are present, we can consider that water body is relatively clean. As urbanization and development expand in Delhi NCR, the natural habitats of these amphibians are being destroyed by real estate and infrastructure projects in low-lying areas. This habitat loss is leading to fragmentation and isolation, which in turn makes it harder for frogs to migrate during the breeding season in the monsoons. Many frogs die as roadkill on the busy roads of Delhi as they are slow dispersers and fail to be noticed on roads at night. But habitat destruction and roadkill are not the only threats. Erratic rainfall patterns caused by climate change are disrupting frog breeding cycles, posing a threat to their survival. Water pollution is another major factor contributing to the dwindling numbers of frogs in the region. The semi-permeable skin of frogs makes them sensitive to pollutants, which can harm and even kill them. All of these uh, were once you know, agricultural fields and a lot of water bodies were there around in this particular place. What happened was that once this township started coming up, they probably have dug up this area trying to construct a lot of buildings and eventually uh, this particular site that you see has converted itself into an amazing frog habitat. You know, it got abandoned last year post lockdown and we could see that there was no uh, construction activity happening. Uh, obviously, when these animals started to move around, they found this particular place and they are now utilizing this. Not for long, it will not be there for long, but uh, uh, right now it's an amazing study site for me as well. If you can see, we have we have probably all the frogs that we have in Delhi and Seattle which breeds in this particular area. So, obviously, it's a site which we won't see, we'll be seeing for long. But yeah, I mean, you can see, you can hear the frog calls also in the background now, right? So, it has already started up, it's early evening. During the course of my study in the last 5-6 years in Delhi NCR, I've seen a lot of interesting uh, behavioral adaptations for frogs. Uh, for example, if you look at the protected areas where amphibians live, there you can see them 
becoming active very early in the evening because there is no anthropogenic disturbance. But if you look at the amphibians outside those uh, uh, protected areas where they breed very late in the night and that is basically a response to anthropogenic disturbance that is there around their habitat. Given the uncertain status of these lands, there is, however, a need for conscious creation and preservation of wild spaces. These spaces can act as a safe haven for frogs, along with other animals, birds and plants. Vijay Dashmana, a self-taught ecologist, has been working for the past 15 years to restore and rewild degraded landscapes in northern India. I represent a group called the Rewilders and we are collaborating with the NGO I am Gurgaon in restoring this 200 acres of uh, wilderness. Uh, right now the status of this wilderness is that it has lots of invasive plants. Uh, one of them mainly is Prosopis juliflora, the Vilaiti Kikar and we will eradicate it over time and replace with native forest species that you find in the northern part of Arabis. So the forests that we find here are uh, Boswellia serrata or salai forest, uh, Dhok forest which is Anogaisis pendula forest, then Dhak forest which is Butia monosperma forest. So we will try to bring these forests in this patch. So mining started around uh, maybe about three to four decades back and most of it was illegal in this part in Gurgaon and people found a place and they started mining wherever mineral was rich, whether it was rock like Quadzite or Abhadarpur. In 2009, Supreme Court uh, came with a ruling that banned all the, all the mining activity and the stone crushing activity in Gurgaon district. As a result, there are lots of lots of mining pits that needs to be rewilded. And we at Rewilders are committed to this and hoping that uh, we get more and more projects like this to rewild the mining pits and create a biodiversity hotspot for our region. In NCR region, the Ravlis are backbone of our big water security. And they also form the last sanctuary for wildlife. You know, we have leopards, we have hyenas, we have jackals, porcupines, you know, close to 300 plus species of birds and lots of lots of insects and other forms of life. I think Arablis need to be protected at any cost. We are hoping that all forms of life kind of uh, see this as home. And especially amphibians because we have so many tiny water bodies here and puddles and they all get filled up in first stream and they it stays up to December. So that's a big time then where when you can actually have a particular habitat in place. Uh, like the other day, children came in and, and they were so excited about seeing frogs and it was it was an orchestra of uh, frogs going on, different kinds of frogs. I think we saw four species then that day. And the kids were very, very excited to learn about frogs. This is the one making the sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two but, but, powerful. This is a male. And this is a male. Do only males. So that, according to us, is recreation. That's how we have to get the society involved in our wilderness. To ensure the conservation and protection of these vulnerable creatures, it is crucial to engage local communities. Dr. Robin, conducting the Rapid Action Project with the Wildlife Trust of India, collaborated with Mr. Rahul Khera, a resident of Sun City Township, addressing the challenge of water logging while also championing the conservation of small animals. Sun City is a society which is adjacent to Aravlis uh, and there's a lot of water logging problem that used to happen in Sun City. So uh, along with Sun City RWA, we did an intervention uh, under which uh, we created a trench uh, through which all the water from the main road is now coming back to the jungle. Other than helping uh, uh, in conservation of water, this also helps us to reduce the road kill, uh, which used to happen previously. A lot of uh, amphibians, reptiles and uh, worms used to get killed uh, on the main road. So all those also find their way back into the jungle. And this way we are able to conserve the water and also uh, save the wildlife around. 
the trench is designed in such a way that towards the end of the trench we have dug a water hole uh, which will eventually become a breeding ground for the frogs and other amphibians uh, in the rainy seasons and in the summer season it can act as a, a water hole for the wildlife uh, in the nearby aravlis. As we strive for progress and development, we must recognize that our survival as a species is intricately connected to the thriving web of life on Earth. Let us join hands and ensure a world where diverse life forms flourish, for without them, we risk a lonely existence. <laughs>